Okay. Enough with that. Let's pick up where we left off. We left off right here. System backup. Okay. So let's assume everything we had done to this point worked. We analyzed our system. We designed a new system, whether that was both software, hardware, or just hardware, or just software. We designed it. We involved the users. We dealt with all the possible user scenarios. The system's in place. The system is running. We've transitioned to the new system. Now, we should be considerate of backing things up. Okay? This is a big deal in the modern world. Here's what the IB curriculum says. Identify a range of causes of data loss. Includes malicious activities, natural disasters. Can you right away think of one other than those two? How could you have lost data? So malicious activities would mean somebody actually steals your data. Natural disaster means like your laptop gets, falls into a pool. No, Devin had a great one. I think it's the most common. User incompetence. I don't need this file. Delete, and right? And that happens a lot. Hard drive failure is not really your fault. It could be if you, like, you know, partying one night and you drop your phone in the pool. Um, but, okay. The sequence of consequences of data loss in a specified situation. Like, what's the consequence? Well, it could be major if it's something big. Like a hotel reservation. You'd fly all the way across the country. Hi, I'm here for my hotel reservation. Oh, I'm sorry. We had a power outage. We lost all that, and all our rooms are booked. Now you're sleeping on the street, right? <laughs> or your blimp. Uh, outline the range of methods that can be used to prevent this, including redundancy systems, etc. All right. So you did your best efforts to build a system for your users. But data loss can still occur. Number one, it could just be a user failure. That they just accidentally delete some files or accidentally overwrite files. Or plain just forget to save their file and just shut their laptop without saving it. Second way, it could actually be a malicious third party attack. Absolutely. Someone could not only try to steal your data, but they could attack your system and just delete your data. Just for fun. Theft. Someone could steal your data. Physically or through hacking. I mean, physically, they could just lift your phone. They could lift your laptop and you lose your data. Viruses and malware, okay, which, do, which can do sort of the stuff from above, right? Transfer personal data, delete everything on a hard drive. Um, worms, Trojan horses, spyware, scanware, etc. We'll talk about those. Okay, worms are designed to not only ingrain themselves into your system and be hidden within your system, but also propagate out to other systems. So worms generally stay hidden on your system. They don't want you to know they're there. And they also try to transfer themselves to as many other systems that you're connected to as possible to create a bigger version of themselves. A Trojan horse, like the fable, is something that's hiding inside of something that comes out with malicious intent later. Now, it used to be in the 90s that viruses and stuff were easy to find because the people writing them wanted to be found. For example, there was this virus in the 90s called the monkey virus. And it, would, it was well known because it would say, you've been infected by the monkey virus and stuff like that. What it tried to do, by the way, was it would try to overclock your system using software to essentially burn out your hardware. Okay. Okay. Um, and then it would say, you've been hit by the monkey virus and stuff like that. But most viruses now aren't like that. They don't want to be found. They want to say, stay as hidden as possible. Because their intent is usually not like that one was just for like random damage. Like it was mean, but you know, it had that sort of just, I'm a cool program, I'm going to hurt other people for fun. Most viruses now aren't like that. They have a deeper purpose, right? They are data mining. They want to know information. All right. Fifth way we can lose data, hardware malfunction. Okay? Actual defects in the hardware. This is complicated hardware. It could easily have defects, and sometimes things just burn out or fry or et cetera. And then things like natural or even unnatural disasters of earthquakes, floods, dropping your laptop on the ground, et cetera. Okay? All right, so let's look at the consequences. If you worked in a hospital or you had medical records in, say you went to the United States 
and somehow you lost medical records, that could be a serious consequence, especially if you had a serious medical con condition, okay? You could lose, say they lost your medical records and you were applying for a job and they were checking your vaccination records and they'd say, well, we don't have your vaccination records, we can't hire you for this job. Oh, what, what, what do you mean you can't hire me? I got, well, we lost all your medical records. That could have a huge impact on you, okay? Banking records. If they can't track your banking records, you could lose money or you could lose credit. You guys probably don't even think about that stuff, like what's my credit score right now? Trust me, that's going to be a bigger and bigger part of your lives, especially next year when you're applying for university, unless, of course, you're a millionaire and can buy blimps. Um, but otherwise, chances are some of you will be taking out a loan of some kind. Okay? You watch that credit score because that is going to affect your life in ways you won't even imagine right now at the age of 19, 20. That's going to affect you in your future. You watch when you're in university next year how many credit card companies are all over you offering you things like free shirts or free Jets tickets. Just sign up for a MasterCard today. You watch those. They're, they aren't they are targeting you for a reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. And just in general, privacy. Okay, we've seen on the news Hollywood stars get their accounts hacked and pictures of them dancing around in their gitch and stuff on the internet or otherwise, right? That happens. That's a invasion of privacy. All right. To prevent data loss, we create a backup system. Okay? Examples include physical backups. So actually taking your hard drive and backing it up on another hard drive. There are all kinds of ways to do this. One is a what's called a RAID, which stands for a Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. That's what the acronym stands for. Okay. Um, redundant or redundancy is a very British term. I don't know if you've ever heard the British use it. Um, very much like the object Q that we're going to be studying today or, or tomorrow. These are British terms, right? They often in uh, businesses will say, oh, you're redundant, right? That means you are extra, we don't need you, right? Um, wow. Online backups, very common today. Cloud backups, off-site backups. I use this. So I don't trust our school server, so I use one of many online backup systems like Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft's OneDrive. There are others. There's one called Carbonite. Any of you heard of that one? Okay. There are all kinds of backup systems. Now, in addition to physical backup systems, we have software prevention systems like antivirus software. Now, that one I would actually argue is a little controversial. Okay. Hold, hold me out. Conspiracy theory time by walks. Okay. All right. A little bit. We're going to get a little bit. Hold on. Going to get my good, going to get my Alex Jones on a little bit. All right, so I'm not a big fan of some antivirus software. I feel it causes more problems on my system than solves more problems on my system. Now, that being said, I'm not doing a lot of, I'm, you know, I'm not doing a heck of a lot on the internet that I'm that worried about. To take it to the next level, I could almost argue in some ways that a lot of virus software, virus software, is written by antivirus programmers. So if they provide you the cure for the disease that you have, they create a self perpetuating system there. Okay? Now, I didn't say all. I said some. Okay? That has been proven in some cases that some antivirus software programmers also wrote the same viruses. So, I, I, again, I worry about that a little bit. I for sure know that in companies like Microsoft, they build some of that right into their operating system. And depending on what you're doing and what, sometimes we use the term in programming, like how critical is the data? Like, so if you work in a government office, this is going to be a bigger deal, right? I mean, it's all over the news. I saw it literally this morning about Trump and the Russians. Remember, I introduced it to you a couple days ago. It's now like their lead story, not the, the stuff. With the, they are all over this, how much communication was going on between the United States government and the Russian government, okay? And then 
the actual number one cause of hacking is not fancy code. It's actual physical stuff. These people who are hackers, all they're generally doing is going through the trash of, say, movie stars. And, oh, look, I found a password. And then they go over and type it in, boom, it works. That's how literally it's working for the most of this hacking. It's not some guy in, with like seven screens and green code and all that. I know that's what we like to imagine is happening, but in reality, it's just some guy picking through like Jennifer Lawrence's garbage and go, oh, look, here's a check statement that she forgot to shred, and then goes and tries her passwords or finds an old photo with Grammy. Oh, I wonder if that's her password, Grammy. Yep, it worked. That's literally what's happening. So that can be prevented with just physical smartness. Lock in your door, shredding your records, simple things like that, especially if you're in a company, right? All right. Software deployment is the last section of the curriculum in this portion. I didn't design the order to this curriculum, by the way. OK. We've got a new system in place. Something needs an update. How do we do that? So describe strategies for managing releases and updates within a system. So for example, the version of NetBeans in this lab isn't the newest version. Could we update this lab? Yes, but we will not until the end of the semester. That's this school's management policy for it. There's reasons for that, plus and minus. Okay. So we need updates. So for example, one update would be just an app update or an in-app update. Whenever software is started, the updater will run and it'll say, what version of software are they using? Check the website, what version should they have? Oh, we have a conflict. So I'm going to suggest to the user that they do an update. Like the one that came up at Open House this week. I had all the beautiful videos running in the room and I had this room all set for Open House. I went and had some pizza with Miss Fernie and I came back and that Apple thing, you know, the Apple updater came up with the, we've got new iTunes uh, software for you. And it has to be taken care of. That thing is so interruptive. It just sits there right on the screen and it won't let you do anything else except deal with it. So I had to then go around and go, no, 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 all around the room to do that. Um, okay. Some software can be set up for auto-updating. If you like that, you can just say, you know what, uh, don't bug me, just do it for me, okay? This often happens on things like your operating system. It will automatically update, but sometimes as well, you can make it a little smarter. You can say, you know what, can you update at two o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday so that I know I'm gonna be sleeping at that time? Or actually, maybe for you teenagers, it would be one o'clock in the afternoon or maybe nine o'clock in the morning because I've been up all night gaming and now I know I'll be asleep, so that's a good time to update whatever you think, okay? Java itself has the update, the Java updater, right? I'm sure some of you have seen a screen like this before where Java, especially when your grandma buys a new laptop and that comes up right away, right? How do you get a new update? Hardware updates are a little different. They use terms like firmware or driver software which basically updates the hardware. This sometimes does not check automatically, especially with older hardware. Like for example, the little camera I plugged into my computer that I made a big deal about this morning. It wasn't recognized. I had to go to the website and find the software to make it run because it's older hardware, okay? Maybe it has a update. Maybe I have to dig deep into the operating system and look for some option to update that. Depends, right? Programmers and software and hardware makers are getting more on the same page to try and keep this stuff easier for the user to do so that the user doesn't have to do as much as they did in the past to keep their software, hardware, everything up to date. That's it. Now, I'm just going to turn off the video, but before I let you guys, before we start coding, <laughs> 